Hi, and welcome to the Business of Building Applications. This is a series of videos. This is for a course that I'm teaching, and we're talking about the business process and the management and design of applications. You can see that there are several chapters that I'm going to cover here, and we are on number five right now, which is focused on choosing the right kinds of tools for the apps that you're building. So if this looks interesting to you, make sure that you subscribe. My name is Shad Sluter, and I am a professor of software technologies at Grand Canyon University. So please come to class with me if you like this kind of thing. These are the other topics that are ahead of us, so there's still more to come. Now let's get right to the point here. We are talking about the app development choices. In the previous video, I said several reasons for why you shouldn't build an app at all, which is kind of a strange thing for a class on building mobile applications. So check that one out if you haven't seen it. Now we're going to focus on this one, this video, about several examples of apps that really nailed it. These are good products. These are companies usually that make an app worth your while. And then we're going to talk about cross-platform apps in the next video. So right now we're talking about nine mobile apps that work. So these are things that actually are worth your download. What is not on the list are a lot of things that you would probably already like as apps. So for instance, this, this example here shows a store where the mobile experience is very similar to the, uh, uh, the app experience on a, on a Chrome browser. And so really there's no advantage of building a custom mobile app for this. So for instance, Amazon, you can do all your shopping on Amazon right through their mobile uh, website. And so uh, it might be a good idea to have the app, but not necessarily. So what we're going to focus on here are people's apps that really require you to have a native app. Let's start with the banks. So banks have done a great job of eliminating the need for the bank itself. And so you've seen commercials where you can do all of your banking online. You just take a photo of it and the bank will process with that photo. Also, it's good for alerts. And so banking has become clearly not just a computer item where you can add and remove and transfer funds, but you can make payments, mobile payments, you can deposit checks. And so the bank app that you have on your phone is likely a good use of your technology there. Now, I'm going to put McDonald's in here. Uh, now I could probably substitute the McDonald's app for most, uh, f most restaurants. Uh, this is just one that I happen to use. And uh, there's a couple of reasons why I picked it. One, you can reduce your uh, time through the drive-through like in half. You don't have to pay for anything. It's already pre-ordered. Also, they give me uh, all kinds of uh, uh, location aware kind of uh, ideas. So I know that the GPS is watching me, so it knows my patterns. So I included it here as an effective mobile app that uh, I use on a regular basis. The next app I'm gonna put on here is no surprise. Uh, a lot of people would expect Lyft or that other company, Uber, we would might put in there. Uh, why is this a good mobile solution and not just a web solution? Well, I think the GPS is pretty important here. We have to know where we are and where we want to go and so the com the computing there is pretty high the graphics of the map have to be good and most importantly we have to know the gps location so i'm going to include lyft as one of those apps that is transformative uh, without a phone you probably wouldn't be able to do it and so this is a great example now i didn't include uber um, i have a long memory of companies that i would consider evil so, so just check the, the news from several years ago about why Uber might be an evil company. So the next company up is Walgreens. Now there's probably other good pharmacy apps out there, but we'll just pick Walgreens because, well, they're famous. So what can you do with an app that you can't do with a website? Well, first of all, you can refill your prescription with a scan. So your, your phone has a camera and they've built the app right there so that it, it'll recognize which bottle you have in your hand and it will connect to your account. Also with Walgreens, you can have telemedicine, so you can talk to the doctor or pharmacist without an appointment, perhaps standing right there in the store or as you uh, are on the way. Maybe, hopefully you're not driving and talking, but the Walgreens app is going to eliminate the need for a lot of uh, time-consuming work. And you can't do these things in a regular website, so that's why it makes the list of a successful company app. IKEA comes up next. So you remember IKEA is the company that will sell you uh, furniture in a box and you have to assemble it. So what does their app do that's kind of interesting or unique? Well, they have a 3D modeling tool 
which is based on the technology that's in your phone, like uh, augmented reality, and uh, what's called LiDAR, which is the uh, kind of a radar system using light waves. And uh, you can place furniture in your house and take a look at it. You can paint your walls and wallpaper your house virtually, and you can see the results as you move the phone around. So literally you spin around looking at your phone, you see the room, and then you have uh, pictures of uh, items of furniture and accessories superimposed over the picture. So a great tool for selling their products. Uh, I don't really know if this is effective as far as increasing sales, but I liked it because it was the cool factor. So maybe that will just allow people to look at uh, IKEA's furniture more often. So personally, I haven't used the app, but I just think it's a great idea. Uh, L'Oreal is a makeup company, of course. And what are they doing that requires a mobile app? Well, you can try on their products. You can put lipstick on or makeup of any kind. You can style your eyes. And it's a virtual kind of an augmented reality experience as well. So this is kind of an Instagram or Snapchat uh, idea, but they're using it to sell their products. And you can see that you can probably click the buy button and uh, you'll be happy with your results, even though you haven't actually tried anything on. Here's an app that probably is just picked out of uh, a classification of many, Golf Shot. So what is Golf Shot? It's a program that allows you to see around yourself. So if you uh, select the golf course name that's in the list, they have all the measurements to the green, to the shortcuts, to the sand traps, and uh, it's kind of like having a caddy that knows the course extremely well. You can see ahead of you. Uh, other similar apps to this I've seen is a Peak Finder app where you show uh, the, the mountains that are around you. It tells you the mountain name. It literally points to an arrow to the peak and says, like, this is Long's Peak in Colorado, which is 14,520 feet tall. And in your golf game, people get pretty serious about golf, right? They want to make sure that they have the proper information. And you get a map of the course that you're looking at. It tells you a little dot on the map, where you are, how far you are to the green. And so, once again, this is a great example of an app that requires a native app. It won't work in a website, so download the app. It'll be worth your while. And I predict that rich golf people are going to spend a little bit of money on an app if it'll improve their game. I mean, for goodness sakes, they buy all kinds of expensive golf carts, golf clubs, and clothing so why not invest a little bit in your mobile app as well Vuforia Chalk is my next candidate for a great app so what is it it's an app that you would use for the remote expert and almost all the examples that you would see on their website and other uh, propaganda that they show shows a person who's a, a field technician is this person and he's looking at something very specialized and you, you can see that superimposed over the picture where he's working is somebody else that is drawing on the uh, on the tablet. So the technician might not be familiar with this piece of equipment. And so the numbers there say plug in here, disconnect number two, attach number three. And it's an augmented reality solution again. So a collaboration of people looking at an object even though they might be thousands of miles away. So. Some years ago, I was involved in a construction project where uh, we were in Mexico and the experts were in Boston. And literally, we were trying to use video chat and cameras. It was, it was okay, but this would have been better if we could have had this uh, augmented reality where we would see and touch and uh, communicate in real time as if we were both looking at the same thing. And so that's a great solution. Obviously, you can't do that with a website only. Health monitoring apps are a big category, and it seems like Android and Apple and Google and, and Apple have already given us some great tools, but there's probably a niche available for others. So think of uh, gadgets that must plug into your phone. So in this case, we're measuring the uh, oxygen in your blood, and you can't do that with a camera. You can't do it with just a fingerprint sensor. So there's this physical device that plugs into the phone. And as soon as you have a physical device going through a USB cord or some other communications, you're not going to do that with just a website. You're going to have a native mobile app. And so I know that like credit card swipers would be a good example of this. So people 
that are in a food truck are going to be charging you with a credit card, not with a machine, except for, except for their phone. So another infamous example it was the uh, company called Theranos. Uh, look them up in the news. They're another one of those evil companies that I would refer to in my, my long-term memory. They had a plug-in item to a phone, and they claimed that they could replace an entire laboratory with a drop of blood on a microchip and the app would take care of all of the tests. And uh, it was a little bit of a overpromise and a, a lie, a straight lie. And so the founder of uh, Theranos is in trouble and in criminal court because of her actions. So these are companies that have built apps that are great examples of why you need a mobile solution and not just a website. In this next video, we're going to talk about ways to create cross-platform applications. And so that will reduce the amount of code that you have to write. If you'd like to see the entire course playlist, I'll put this link up as well. And make sure that you subscribe. So welcome to class and come back for some more mobile application development.